Good morning from Norway. Good morning from the Lofoten. <laughs> Whew, I've already started my first hike here. I'm going to hike here for two weeks. Uh, it's called the Lofoten Crossing. 160 kilometers, more than 9,000 meters of altitude gain. Yeah, first day today. And the first day will go up to Madmora. It's 788 meters high, so will be around 15 to 16 kilometers today. Around, ah, as I started at zero, there's the ocean, 780 something uh, meters of altitude gain. And the map says, or my, my map app tells me it's around five and a half hours. So with this heavy backpack, monster backpack, I call it 10 hours. <laughs> The path is very steep here and rocky, so I have to be careful, but I'm trying to talk a little bit whenever I see a stretch that is not so difficult. So, first things first, Lofoten. What are the Lofoten? Lofoten is an archipelago, lago, I put the name down there, uh, in the northwest of Norway. It's mostly between a latitude of 67 and 68 degrees. It means it's above the Arctic Circle, which is at 66.3 degrees. Archipelago means it well, sticks out from the uh, rest of Norway. It's uh, uh, several islands connected with bridges or underwater tunnels or with ferries. It's not on. You can drive here. Yeah? You can. There's a road going all the way to the most southern island. But I'm going to walk it. It's steep already. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, definitely steep, very hard. First day with this monster backpack. I checked this morning, it was just above 20 kilos. <laughs> yeah, well, it has two bottles of water, full gas cartridge, uh, food for five days, because five days in five days is the first chance for me to restock on supplies in the supermarket. Yeah. Whew. One hour in and I'm already having the first break. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long day. Oh God. So I'm doing the Lofoten crossing here. Uh, that's uh, not an official hike. It means it's not signposted as one through hike or anything like that but it's well known and you find many youtube videos are about about it already and many uh, vlogs so you find information about it on a website called rando lofoten i think they kind of invented it and the idea is they wanted to have a long distance hike in the lofoten here we have plenty of hikes yes all day hikes but Having one through hike was the was the goal, so they sat down and combined somehow yeah some some very nice hikes, some very nice day hikes to eleven days of hiking. They combined it kind of yeah. Sometimes you have to walk on the road, sometimes you on a path again, but you can basically they um, they describe it as an eleven day itinerary. You can go a little bit faster. You can take more time, of course. I think the world record, I just recently saw a video, it's like three days or something. I think he didn't sleep. Uh, I will link to his video, it was pretty cool. But I think the average should be like between seven and 12 days, I would say. I have two weeks here, so 
I will follow the normal itinerary, 11 days, and I have two flexible, two buffer days in case there's some bad weather, or maybe in the end I can do something else if I'm faster than expected, but at the moment I'm very slow with this big backpack. <sighs> it is steep. It's funny, it's kind of busy, the hike here. Quite some people overtaking me and then but the same people come down again. So it seems they just go up here and then have a look and then go down back to their car. <laughs> and already a couple of them felt sorry and then just said, oh, you're almost there, you're almost there. 12 more minutes. Hey, the summit is just there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you can tell my, by, by my voice, I'm exhausted okay now i understand what they mean with you're almost there because there's kind of a lookout there or highest point but that's not where i'm going i'm going there along the ridge there <laughs> uh, to that summit that's a bit longer Two hours in, another break. Look at that. Crazy. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, break is over. And just checked again. I'm at 400 meters of elevation now. It <laughs> means I'm halfway. Because Mat is 788. Right, but oh, come on, two hours in. It's just yeah, a bit more difficult than the West Highland Way. <laughs> I really have to say that. Because it's a mountain here, it's not flat. You can consider that, or compare it with going along. The Loch Lomond, that stretch, but uphill. <laughs> That's how it was like so far. Well, I knew it would be hard because, of course, I saw the profile of this Lofoten crossing. Basically, every day you go across one mountain, every single day. Oh. I think it is every day. <laughs> so that was expected. Still, it's a difference between knowing it and expecting it and then being here and feeling it. Yeah, it feels hard. Okay, so here I definitely need my motivational motto. I am speed. I am speed. I am speed. <laughs> okay. There's no one here or they would think I'm crazy. I think they already think I'm crazy because I have this gigantic monster backpack. Again, I should call myself Monster Backpack Man or something like that. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Woohoo! <laughs> what? <laughs> Ooh, 
that's the Lofoten. <laughs> oh wow, look at that. Crazy. Wow. Okay, we are following this ridge line there now. There and up there. And then Matmora. Okay, I'm uh, on a kind of like a plateau here. Go slightly uphill, but it's not so steep. So I have time to talk a bit more and give you some more background information. Uh, sorry if you see any flies on the pictures. <laughs> Many little flies here. They seem to like the GoPro camera because I sweated on it and there's salt on it and I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. So, I arrived here yesterday. I had a flight from Munich via Frankfurt to Ivenis, Narvik, Ivenis. It's a big airport here, or the biggest airport in, in the Lofoten, in the northern end of the Lofoten. From there, catch the bus to Svolver, where I spent the, li the night yesterday. So Svolver, I would say, is a good base if you want to start the Lofoten crossing. But still, from to get here to the trailhead of this hike, the description says that I should take a bus from Svolver to here, a morning bus. The problem is, uh, it didn't exist. <laughs> It exists, but it doesn't run in school holidays. Yeah? It seems to be used by the school kids. And in July, when there are school holidays in Norway, they don't need that bus, so it's not going. Fortunately, I knew it beforehand, so because I tried to find the bus and I could not find it. So I had no choice. Well, okay. There was a choice. The choice was hitchhiking or taking a taxi. But I've never really tried to hitchhike, so I said, okay, whatever. <sighs> Take the taxi, just it's the easiest. So yeah, I ordered a taxi. It was 30 minutes from Svolver here to the trailhead. Just hike. Started very late though, because I had some problems again this morning. These problems might sound interesting to you if you have watched my West, Th West Thailand Way videos, because I struggled to find a gas cartridge, you know, for camping, to to cook water, to boil water, to in order to make coffee, porridge, and dinner. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You have to change the hand again. Yeah, there we go. Hard work here, the blogging thing. So yeah, I struggled again with the stupid gas card, right? Uh, I wanted to buy it from the gas station because I read that they have it. And it's true, normally they have it, but they, they ran out of it over the weekend. Yesterday was Sunday and I, they didn't have any more left on Sunday and told me okay maybe Monday morning at 9 a.m. we have a new delivery. We cannot promise but just come back and see what we can do. So fortunately they had one for me at 9 a.m. yes. <sighs> but then yeah it took me some time then to check out from my accommodation and last packing and then ordered the taxi and then yeah, I think when I arrived at the trailhead it was already like 10.30 or something like that I tried other shops this morning the supermarkets opened at 7 a.m. but uh, I tried four different supermarkets but not they, they don't have it and then the there are some outdoor shops, some sports shops like Intersport. They could have it, yeah, 
but they didn't open until 10 a.m. this morning and yesterday evening Sunday evening was already closed when I arrived so however I have it it's on the backpack gas cartridge and I checked it it's working <laughs> On this hike I'm trying to do more wild camping than in Scotland. Wild camping is allowed in Norway and also here on the Lofoten. Kind of the same rules than in Scotland. So don't wild camp close to private properties. Stay minimum 150 meters away. Then There's some, well, I would not say camping management zones, but in some areas, uh, even though they are 150 meters away from houses, you're still not welcome to camp. It's very difficult. You cannot know that. So I have a, I downloaded a map or an app with a map on it where you can exactly check if it's okay to wild camp at the location you are or not. There are some campsites, for example, tonight there's a campsite, but mostly this Lofoten crossing is meant for wild camping. So the description on that uh, website where I find the information about this Lofoten crossing, the information and the description gives you some hints, some ideas where to look for those white camping spots at the end of the day. Oh, it's very nice. I will try to find exactly that locations that I mentioned in the description. So if you want to do the same hike, you can see how it looks like and then you can decide for yourself if you want to go there or not. The description also gives you an idea about where you have the possibility to buy more things, like stock up on, stock up on food, things like that, or maybe charge your batteries. I think the main spot is halfway. It's called Legnes. That's where the second biggest airport is. So it's a small city, and yeah. The hike goes through there and there for sure it's very very handy to go to the supermarket. Okay, I will not give you all the information today as it's a lot of information about this the Fulton Crossing thing. I will give you information along the way and I think for now. I will focus on going uphill again because <laughs> it's going uphill here. Yeah? So let's focus again on this hike. That's the wildlife we have here. Sheep. Hello. Oh. Oh, sheep parade. <laughs> I can see my future. You can see on the right hand side along the ridge, over that one, down on that side, then up there on that ridge, do, 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 oh, and then to Matmora. Yeah.
goes up and down here at the moment. <laughs> there it goes down. And there it goes up. Wow, this last little bit along the ridge up to the mountain is so spectacular. Look at that. What? Oh, oh my god. There's the mountain. There's the other side. Crazy. Crazy. Hooray! I made it! The summit of Mount Mora, 788 meters. Yeah, it is almost 6 p.m. Ah, but the good thing here in the Lofoten in July is that the sun actually never sets. Well, technically it does set, like half past midnight, but then it sunrise again is then one hour later, so it doesn't get dark. Ooh, and as you already might have noticed, I have a drone with me. I cannot hide it anymore because you just probably just saw some clips. Uh, yeah, thought a long time about getting one or not, but now I got one. But I try to be uh, respectful, so not not in any areas where I'm not allowed to, of course, I'm not disturbing any animals. I don't fly if there are any people around here, so I don't like that. Because that's something I did not like about drones, about drones uh, before I had one, was that you know you're sitting on the summit, you're enjoying the the peacefulness, the birds, and then suddenly it's a drone. So that sucks. So I try to be respectful and only use it if there's no one else around. So I always check. Yeah. Oh, I hope I can get some. Uh, interesting footage for you. Okay, time to go down. It's going to be very steep. Be careful, no filming downhill. <laughs> I'm already doing it wrong. 
it goes that direction towards that lake there and then somehow we'll make our way back to that street over there okay beginning was this rocky field here took a little bit of orientation but there are red dots and little stone piles so it was okay see another red dot over there and of course I can see the path It's a mix of gravel and sand, it's very slippery, you have to be careful. Oh, yeah, I prefer uphill. <laughs> I cannot control when I go downhill. I'm always slipping, knee starts to hurt. I find downhill harder than uphill. I'm a weirdo. Woo! Still down, down, down. The sweat band is on. <laughs> Ooh. I'm thinking of stopping at the lake there, if I come by there, because I have a problem. <sighs> I ran out of water. I'm too super thirsty, as you can tell by my voice. <sighs> oh, I need water. So I was walking along the path there. And then I heard water in the distance. And I thought, okay, maybe there's some water running down to the to the lake there. And I followed the sound and then got a little bit, it was half a bottle, and look where I got it from. <laughs> this little corner here. Okay, it was good, some water. Oh, feels better now. Now the path goes down, down there into the forest again. Oh, forest, some trees. Then, yeah, we have to make it all the way down there to the water. Okay, just filled up both water bottles here from the little from the little waterfall stream. So green bottle is full and the extra bottle I had from the supermarket is also full. So and I drank one extra bottle. One bottle bottle is in my stomach. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 8 30 and I have to already Think about where to sleep. Yeah? I don't think I will make it to the campsite, <clears throat> so I'm already looking. But yeah, so far all the way down, it's just a steep path. There's no way that you can camp here. <clears throat> Further up at the lake, it was super wet, and yeah, the ground was very, very how, how do I say, very soaked with water and very wet and muddy. So it was not a good spot. Higher up, yeah, but higher up I was not looking for a campsite. So let's see what I find further down there. There's already uh, the bottom somewhere. Yeah. Exhausted, but I am speed. <laughs> so here now on the way down, uh, I met many couples, let's say, yeah, couples uh, who went up the mountain. And one said they are going to watch the sunset. So, oh, yeah, pretty cool. But sunset is in <laughs> three and a half hours. <laughs> Okay, back on the forest road. Oh, I think that's the car park here. Oh, 
Okay, I found a spot, I think. Uh, yeah, this is actually the salt area. <laughs> uh, it's just off from the road, so you can hear the cars a little bit. So there's one car park there where people are allowed to park. There are even more people over that end. I came down from the car park there. But there was no one parking there and I came, just came down a little thing that looks like a path. And I can see some fire over there. Someone is barbecuing or whatever. So this whole area, there's no one is living here. I checked on the map. No problem to white camp here. Just have to see if there's any animal poop. <laughs> All right, finished. Oh. Oh. 10 p.m. Oh, actually quarter past 10 already. I'm starving, I'm going to eat something now. Oh. I think it's a good spot. Of course I can hear the road, but oh, I don't care. Also I hear some sheep bells, like boom, 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 boom. I'm sure the camera picks it up, so I don't know where it comes from. Is it maybe just an echo from the mountains or are they going to visit me tonight? <laughs> we will find out. There's quite some poop here. I cleaned all the area around the tent. Yeah. But of course there's poop here. Yeah. So, hello sunshine. Okay, dinner's ready. Uh, we're having oop, beef and potato stew. I already know that from the West Island way, from Scotland. It was very good. Yeah. Test. <laughs> New. A nice background. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I like it. I will eat that now and then then it's bedtime. <sighs> Alright, tent camera. I'm about to sleep now. It is oh, 10 past 11. Had a nice dinner. And just at the end of the dinner there was a sudden sudden uh, shower so rain rain shower suddenly it was like pouring a lot for <laughs> five minutes maybe and then now it's completely dry again it's funny so fortunately it was in that moment i was at the tent and suddenly it started like raining like crazy and i was able to uh, grab the things that were outside and close the tent so nothing happened okay looking forward to the second day tomorrow. First, looking forward to some rest. Okay, see you tomorrow. That's the reality. It's wet, no makeup. It's very deep mud. If you sink in here, then your shoe is gone. Kaltes, klares Wasser. Deep section here. Looks a bit sketchy in the fog. My senses are a bit on alert at the moment here. I came just down that rocky section there <sighs> on my butt. Falling all the time. My butt is completely dirty. Bleeding from my knee. I'm not showing that. 